Good day, ladies and gentlemen. A warm welcome to our technical summary video on the FICA Amendment Summary. My name is Letty Janssen van Vieren, and I'll be taking you through the document that was issued by SICA in January this year. It's a handy summary on the FICA Act, or on the FIC Act, and all the amendments which became effective on the 19th of December 2022 already. So if we go and have a look at the contents of today's session, we're going to look at why this is important as always, an introduction, then the contents of the publication, and you'll see I've given you a screenshot of the publication on the right hand side. I'm going to go through a quick overview and summary, and then I will conclude. All right, so the next 15 minutes or so, we'll be going through a summary of this. These are the abbreviations that I've used on your slides. As you can see, SICA, FIC, FICA, so FIC is just the Financial Intelligence Center, FICA is the ACT, AML is Anti-Money Laundering, AI, account Accountable Institution, right, not, not the normal artificial intelligence that we, we, we lately refer to. So it's AI Accountable Institution in terms of FIC, and FATF, the Financial Action Task Force. So why is this important? All right, FICA is another piece of legislation that we've got to comply with. Your clients have to comply with. And if they don't, you've got certain obligations in terms of no class reporting obligations it could lead to it could include things like reporting to management qualifying your audit opinion or even reporting an ri whether it be to fic uh, to, uh, to not to fix sorry to sub c if you are conducting a review or as an as an auditor reporting the ri to erba mainly the main reason why this but uh, why this publication is important is whether you are an auditor, an independent review, or an accountant, you need to consider whether you are now regarded as an accountable institution. That was one of the biggest changes and shocks that we got in December, and you've got to then meet the relevant re requirements that apply to you as an AI. Also on top of that, not only yourself, but you also need to consider whether your client is an accountable institution because they also have certain responsibilities in terms of FICA. So the relevance to your clients is insofar as they meet the definition of an accountable institution, they then have a duty to comply with the FICA, otherwise they could be held liable, same as you could as well. All right, but you've got to comply in two instances, in your capacity as auditor, independent reviewer and accountant, um, or even a trustee, and then you also need to worry about whether your client is an AI or not. So I'd say this is pretty darn important. From an introductory point of view, we know that FICA, uh, FIC has amended the FICA, the FICA Act, right? Some schedules have been related. This is in response to the recommendations made by FATF after they grey listed us, right? They've, they've now fast-tracked the legislation, and that's why we saw the FICA Act um, amendments come through with an effective date of 19, 19 December 2022, so on the date, of pro the date that it was promulgated. The main changes that were made there was to Schedule 1. The list of AIs has been amended. There's now three new categories of businesses included. Schedule 2, they've updated the list of supervisory bodies, and Schedule 3, all the reporting institutions of FICA have been deleted. So there are no more reporting institutions. They've all been included now on Schedule 1. So as part of an overview, it's, six, it's five pages long. It was issued by SICA in January 2023. The contents we're going to look at uh, briefly, FATF, then FICA itself. We're going to look at um, Schedule 1 amendments that come through and why we would worry about where CAs, AGAs and AATs fall within the scope of Schedule 1 and would then be regarded as an accountable institution and have to meet then the requirements of FICA. The responsibilities of reporting of accountable institutions, very important there because that's for you and for your clients. Guidance that's been issued by FIC, I always like to go to, to the guidance sections on that because we could all use a little help. Offenses and penalties, the effective date, and the transitional provisions. So that's the whole five pages. What I'm going to do today in, in the five minutes or well, the 10 minutes that we have today, I'm going to quickly take you through the amendments. So Schedule 1 sets out a list of all the accountable institutions, right, who are regarded as, as AIs. And this is the list that now includes us as accountants, as an AI. 
So the lead, some of the changes included here, the numbers have gone from 16 to 19, and you'll see the credit providers is included in there. Although the National Credit Regulator is not a supervisory body of FIC yet, they will need to be, all right? At the moment, Uber is a, is an, is a supervisory body of FIC. Um, so auditors will, would then be um, monitored by Uber in their capacity as, as a supervisory body of FIC. Remember, FIC is just the, the body that sits there and gathers all, all the information. They really are just a, a step below the Constitution. So they are the ones that everyone report to. They, they take on all the status, the, the stats and everything, and they then report on that. So credit providers are included. And then people who deal with high value goods. Now, high value goods are regarded as being valued in 100,000 Rand or more. So you'll see where before we had our, Kru, our Kruger Rand dealers. Um, included as a reporting institution under Schedule 3, they are now included here as high-value goods. And the the car dealers as well, right, motor vehicle dealers, they are also now included in this high-value goods. They really have made sure that not much gets through this net, okay? So the, the net has really been cast much wider than before. And you'll see the um, also persons carrying on dealings with um, crypto assets, various crypto assets. So all the new ones, all the new service providers are also included in there. Uh, trustee of a trust, just I put it on the list, it's always been regarded as an AI, whether you're an entity or an individual, but I just put that on the list as well because people tend to forget about that. And then the one that, that uh, knocked the wind out of our sales, trust and company service providers or TCSP. So that's why I've put the little arrow there. If we go and have a look at what a TCSP is, the formal definition you can find in Section 2A of FICA of the Act. And what I've done is I've just on the next slide given it to you in English. All right. So question number one, are you a TCSP? And are you then because of that an AI? So all accountants have got to specifically consider whether they're an AI or not, and they've got to measure themselves against the definition of a, T, of a TCSP, Trust Company Service Provider. So it specifically is included and defined as follows. A person who carries on a business of preparing for or carrying out transactions for a client. So if you, if you, you carry on a business, it has to be part of your business. So it's not just a, a favor or something that you do like that. It's your business and you are busy helping clients, um, or you prepare the documents on their behalf. If you help them or you prepare the documents in the planning or execution of the organization of contributions necessary to create, operate or manage a company, that's it. If you are busy planning or executing anything to create, operate, or manage a company or an external company or a foreign company, then you are a TCSP, or you are busy with um, assisting your client with the operation or management of a CC, specifically included, right? So a person who carries on a business where you basically, basically are helping to form a company, so you are lodging the documents for them on um, SIPC. Right. That would be included as that. Then we've got a person who carries on the business of creating a trust arrangement. Or if you are preparing out or carrying transactions as a trustee. So in your capacity as trustee, very specifically, you, you are included. But the, the top part has come, has come in. All right. So there's been a draft note or a draft PCC, which is a public compliance communication. And basically what, what's happened is they've tried to give us more guidance on, on TCSPs, right? On the trust and company service providers. They've said that a person is both natural and legal. When they talk about carries on the business of, the term of carrying on a business is not defined in FICA. So the ordinary meaning of the term would then within the context of FICA be applied, meaning that business is a commercial activity as opposed to a charitable undertaking or a government institution. 
So persons who are appointed as providing TCSP functions on an occasional basis or who perform this, this, this function in personal capacity as opposed to doing so on a commercial basis as a regular feature of their business, they would not be required to then be registered as a TCSP. Right, so we, when you get the question, if you are a TCSP in, in terms of the new section 2A for FIC, you are an AI and you need to go and register with FIC as an accountable institution. All right, so that's very, very important here. When they're talking about creating or helping with the administration processes where you can go and then start an organization, or so basically creating the company or whatever with SIPC, operation of the company deals deals with assisting with the daily operations of the client. You don't have to do it on their behalf because that would make you management. Operating, right? Operation of the company means that you help them. Management is basically managing the company. That's where you make management decisions regarding the company. And this is the one where I say, where I always say that we know that we're safe on this because we don't make the management decisions. We will basically give them recommendations, which means that we help them with their operation and creation. Then the trust definitions, just if you missed that before, the trust that is created for testamentary trusts, court orders, or where a person is placed under curatorship, or whether it's created by the trustees of a retirement fund, okay? So it could be payable to the beneficiaries of a retirement fund as well. Um, it could also be that the trust nominates beneficiaries, and you'll see when we get to beneficial ownership in another video later um, that, that, that we also have to worry about beneficial ownership. The responsibilities of an AI, very, very important. They've said new and old AIs must fulfill certain duties. They've got to register with FIC. Now they gave us they gave us basically ninety days, right? Ninety days from the from the nineteenth of December, which made it the nineteenth of March. Which basically, if you're listening to the video now, has come and gone. What they have said is that they will give us some more time, right? They said that they will. I spoke to somebody at FIC. And they said that they will be issuing another document to say, if you are now a new institution or a new AI, um, you will be given a grace period to, to register and become compliant. I think that they've, they've just gazetted it now um, that we've got basically until June 2024, which is basically 18 months grace period before we've got to comply with all the FIC regulations and the FIC legislation. Submit your regulatory reports to FIC on an annual basis. Implement a risk-based approach to so your customer due diligence. You'll know your client uh, process there, which we basically already have. You've got to then also have an RMCP, Risk Management and Compliance Program, record-keeping controls, your targeted financial sanction controls aimed at terrorist financing, um, your Section 26, 26 of the FIC, uh, FIC Act here, your um, sanctions to controlled uh, controls aimed at proliferation financing, prominent influential person controls, your PIPs. Um, in subsequent legislation, the PIPs have now become PEPs, right? Politically, um, politically uh, um, people. Implementing a compliance function and appoint a person responsible for compliance. So you'll have a compliance officer. You'll have to have, together with your, your, your risk matrix then, your risk management and compliance program, you'll then also have to train your, your employees, all of them, on how to comply with the FIC Act. The guidance that's been issued by FIC um, was the first guide that you, you can follow that link there to go and help that. This sets out all the requirements where the, uh, where the AI can then go and see what they must obtain. All right, so that's quite nice. They also have PCC number 53 on the RMCP and guidance note seven. All right, so I've given you those, those links available there that you can go and go and have a look at. In terms of the penalties, non-compliance with FICA means imprisonment of up to 15 years or fines up to 100 million. The one thing it's never been is small in, pen in penalties. Right, the transitional uh, provisions, remember I told you we've got the new sectors have this 18-month period, which means that we've got until June 2024 before we've got to go and comply. 
Right. The supervisory bodies will conduct inspections. The problem is that the supervisory bodies are not finalized yet for most of, this, of the new sectors. Your source document you can find there. You can follow the link to download it. Um, then in summary, just make sure you've got to make sure whether you are an AI, are you a TCSP, measure yourself, go into detail on the definitions. If you are an AI, you have to fulfill all your, com all your responsibilities. In terms of reporting to FIC, that's the most important thing. And your FICA compliance will also then be monitored from next year. If you still need more detail, you can go and have a look at um, everything on my knowledge is power slide. We've got the all the, the items there that we can assist you with to, to broaden your horizons as well. All right. But that, in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen, was the new Psycho FIC Act summary. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye. Bye.